see, God looks at us in our current state and sees us in our intended state. Your breakthrough may not come the way somebody else got their breakthrough. Your breakthrough may come a totally different way. God has given you the victory and they call it the triumph is yours. Health is a mindset. Wealth is a mindset. Prosperity is a mindset. I'm not impressed with the crowd. I'm enamored with the Christ. Yes. What I look for, yes. do I see Christ in him? Yes. Do I see the nature of love? Do I see the nature of forgiveness? Do I see the nature of humility? Do I see the nature and the character of God, long-suffering, meekness, kindness, gentleness, faith, temperance, goodness? Do I see that or do I see egotistical? Or I am the shining star in this room and you're trying to prove me of your theological understanding of the scriptures and so you want to homiletically communicate to me and humanetically communicate to me and it don't phase me. Now I can, I'll get with you now, you know, we can, we can talk in, in the scriptures and revelation, but that's not where I am. That's not where you are. So when they said I'm anointed, many times they said I want to be seen. But I better get off of this and I'm talking about. <laughs> you see, I believe that the next move of God, the move of God that we're beginning to see take place, is going to be formed in humility and expressed in love. Where people will be humble and they'll be broken and they'll allow the Spirit of God to move through them even in their brokenness. You, you, you can't, you see, you don't know that you're drowning until you discover you're anchored to too many people. Some folks, you got to let go. And they'll drain you. There are people you got to discern that are attached to you or assigned to you. There's a lot of people who are attached to people and they've never been assigned to them. I'm not assigned to everybody. So I'm looking for the people that God has assigned me to to pour in this word. And my focus is that I will say something that will ignite their spirit man, pierce inside and cause an awakening to the greatness of God that's within them to find that genius and to discover their true identity and divinity and maximize, actualize their full potential. So it's not about religion, it's about relationship. Jeremiah 23. Verse 1, woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, say the Lord. Therefore, thus said the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people, you have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, say the Lord. I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them and will bring them again to their foes. Said their foes. Yes. See, you got to know the fold that God has you in. Some people in fold, they, they're not even destined to be in that fold. You got to know the fold that God has you to be in. He said, I'm going to bring them again into their foes, and they shall be fruitful and what? Increase. And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, not beat them. Shall feed them, not beat them. And they shall fear no more. Watch this. What's the evidence of these good, the shepherds that God said? No. They will fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, said the Lord. Now go to verse 14. Talks about the prophets now. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. They commit adultery. They walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers. That none do return from his wickedness. 
They're all of them unto me as Sodom, and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Therefore thus said the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, Behold, I will, I will feed them with warm, warm wood, and make them drink the water of God, for from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaning is gone forth unto all the land. Thus said the Lord of the hosts, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you that make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart and not of the mouth of the Lord. You're running trying to get your word. And somebody says, uh, you, you, better, you better be careful of the false prophets. Now I say this, you better be careful of listening to the false prophets. Because as long as you're listening, they'll be there. When you stop listening, they'll go. <laughs> Who are you hearing? Yeah, Who are you hearing? Are you hearing God? Or are you hearing a familiar spirit that wants to make you think they are anointed? Because if they're drawing attention to themselves, right then you ought to know. That's the wrong spirit. That's got to be a word that will penetrate your heart. Not just make you feel better. Not just say, baby, it's going to be all right. I'm going to do this and do this. God says, here's a word. When the prophetic really speaks, it unfolds the mysteries of the word of God to you. Instead of you going paying your nine nine eighty eight for a prophecy, well, I need me a man. I need me a man. I want to prophesy? Give me a man. Give me a. Give, I need a wife. Prophesy to me. Give me a wife. And prophesy their own heart. And see, a lot of the prophets. I mean, they're they're legitimate, but the people won't allow them to allow them to really move in the prophetic because they're pulling on them for a personal word. There's nothing wrong with the person word. There's nothing, nothing wrong with that. Listen, but the prophetic, when the prophetic goes, you got to know what's the spirit behind it. That's why I don't allow everybody speaking to my life. Because what they have and what they are, such as I have, give unto thee. Verse 18, read this. This is the key. This is the test. This is the litmus test. It says this. Read. For who has stood... In the counsel of the Lord and had perceived and heard his word who had marked his word and heard it here's the key who stands in the counsel of the Lord who took time to get in God's presence who took time to change a schedule Put everything aside. All the money, no money can buy me. Well, they're going to offer me this, they're going to offer me that. Keep it. Because it's not my motivation. My motivation is the presence of God. I remember a man came to my office one day, a realtor in this city, no longer living now. Came to my office as a buildings and so forth, and he had an appointment. He said, I want to have an appointment with you. And got him an appointment, came in, and talked business. And before that meeting was over, he says, I tell you what, if you get the church to buy this building, I'll give you $10,000. I said, excuse me? I said, wait a minute. Who do you think I am? All right. Do you think... I had a lot of things. I don't want to get into whole time. But I had to adjust his thinking quickly. I said, now I'm going to tell you as though I, I'm going to say that I, I'm going to act as though I never heard you say that. And I'm going to say, our meeting is closed. You can leave. People will come with stuff to try to buy you. And it'll be a test where your heart is. Will I obey God and be in his presence? Will I allow God to interrupt my schedule? And says, I'd rather be in the counsel of the Lord, the presence of God, than to sell out. You see, we have a lot of people today that are ministry-minded, but they're, Christ, they're not Christ-minded. They're money-minded. Stuff-minded. Give me some more stuff. 
There's nothing wrong with having prosperity. Please, you know I teach that. I teach that, you, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as a soul prosper. But that should not be your, your first and foremost goal. That's just secondary product to the relationship that you have with God. I'm a testimony of that. I came back to Mobile with nothing, absolutely nothing, homeless. <laughs> nothing but my faith in God and his word. Because if you find the word of God concerning your life, that's where true success comes in. You see, God looks at us in our current state and sees us in our intended state.